Hello and welcome to another Beehive 101. In this video, we're gonna do a deep dive into settings configuration so that you can get your publication set up with all of the correct data and information that's going to get you publishing as soon as possible with the uh, best foundation. So starting out, you're gonna log into your Beehive account and navigate to settings. And under the settings, you'll notice there's a, a sub nav here that is going to contain a bunch of different options. And so we're just going to work from the top to the bottom, going into a little bit more detail than in the product walkthrough on what each of these settings does and how they affect your publication. So under profile, you can upload a profile picture. This is specific to your personal account. So these this information is gonna be connected to you if you're an author of a post, for example, and you take advantage of the byline, your profile picture is going to be used in that byline. Your name is gonna be used for that byline. Here you can change your email for the account. If you add a Twitter handle, if a user clicks on your name in the byline, it'll take them to your Twitter account and you can add a small bio. From there, notifications are pretty straightforward. If you go in here, you can set your settings to receive or not receive the auto-generated emails from our system. So if you are not the type of person that likes notifications, you can turn those off. And of course, if you need to reset your password, you can do so here. The next settings are gonna be specific to you if you're the admin or you're basically running the publication and, and you're in control of the details of either the company or the, the publication associated with the company. As a quick primer, our structure for accounts from top to bottom goes organization, publication, users. So every organization is when a publication is created for the first time. So if you don't have a Beehive account and you create a new publication, then you're also creating what we refer to as an organization. Now an organization can have a bunch of different team members. An organization can also have multiple publications if you're on our scale plan. So say you have a business, Newsletter Inc., and that company, you publish five different newsletters. When you create your first account, you'll create that organization. And then what we're gonna do is, is show the settings for configuring the business settings. So underneath general, you can change this to the company name. So we'll use that example, Newsletter Inc. And then here you wanna set the address. Based on regulations, we need to have an address. If you don't set it, it's going to be Beehive's headquarters. Otherwise, you can set one here. If you are an international customer, if you just put zeros in the postal code, but you, you can add all the inform other information and it will save correctly, it will not save without a postal code. If you do want to delete the overall account, you can click delete organization here. Now I have the newsletter, the company name set, and I have the address. Under publications, this is where if I'm on that scale plan, I can add additional publications. So right now I have test newsletter. If I wanted to create test number two, I could click this and add a new publication. And when I do that, I'm gonna be able to jump between publications. There's gonna be a drop down that shows up on this main screen that lets me switch between publications really easily. From publications, we go to team. So this is gonna be where you would add team members if you're on our grow plan or above. So you could add as many as you need. You can give them different levels of access. Not everyone, obviously, you might not want them to have company access, but you can add them by email where they'll get an invite to come and create their account, set up their profile and, and so forth. These members, if you're a member of multiple newsletters that are under different organizations or the same organization, you'll be able to jump between those publications through that menu that I just described. But essentially, just so you conceptually you can understand the breakdown, we start with the organization level an organization can have many publications and many users. A user can have both multiple organizations, multiple publications. Moving next to publication, we're going to start here in this general tab. We recommend that you have an 800 by 800 pixel logo. You can upload that here. This is going to show up on your subscribe page. So if I go to this test publication, it'll show up here. And then if I go to the subscribe page, it's gonna show up right here. Next, we have this thumbnail. If you add a default thumbnail, 1200 by 630, that's what's gonna show up 
as a default when you create a post and you don't set a thumbnail at the post level. So important to set something that looks readable and is nice and generic enough so that it looks good, but give a good impression if you are not going to set individual thumbnail images. From here, you can set the publication name. So this is test newsletter. We could change it to whatever we want. This is used in a couple different places like the website where we talk about right here or on the main page. One line description is going to be the description for the newsletter. So the, what shows up here or down here. Reply to address is going to be the address to which users are gonna reply if they hit reply when you send out a newsletter. This can be a support email, it can be a person's individual email, but generally this is going to be different than the sending email that we use. Next, you can modify the language of your subscribe button. So in here you can see it's just the default, but you can modify that by changing here. This is where we set our custom tags. This is where we're going to set the sender name. So you can have it so that it's going to automatically send from whoever the author of the post is. Otherwise, if you want to send from the business name, you can send it from the publication name. It doesn't really matter, but this is where you're going to set what shows up in the user's inbox when they have a new box. You usually see like bold text that shows who it's from. I'll just make it newsletter ink for now. In a email in the footer, we have a section where it says copyright and then the name of the publication, you can modify that. By default, it's going to be the publication, but for example, if we wanted to make the copyright owner Newsletter Inc. versus the name of the publication, we can do that by setting that up. This is where we'll set up our welcome email, and we'll go through a video on how to set up your welcome email, but that's gonna be found right there. Double opt-in is going to allow you to set up a system where once a user subscribes, they have to go into their email and click a confirmation button so that they actively confirm that they're interested in subscribing. This is a best practice advocated by email deliverability experts because it ensures that the user is, one, not having the email used against their will. Two, it ensures that the email is real and correct and that they're going to answer it. And in the case where there may be you know, low quality subscribers. It's gonna make sure that it's getting to their inbox and that they're clicking and actually wanting to subscribe, which will help your open rates down the road. If you do experience that your opt-ins are not being accepted, we also have the Smart Nudge feature where if you turn this on 48 hours after they receive the first double opt-in, they're gonna receive a reminder. And so that can help harvest and recollect any users that may, may not have selected the double opt-in. Lastly, under social accounts, you have the opportunity to place your social media accounts. These will show up in the footer of your email and can help you know, folks find you across the web. Moving over to domains, this is going to be where you set up your custom domains. We'll have a video going into the specifics of how to get that custom domain set up in our grow specific uh, playlist. Premium, is uh, this is going to be where you connect your Stripe account if you're on our grow or scale plan. The RSS feed can be generated and then given to subscribers so that they can get your posts in their favorite RSS reader. There's some other purposes there, but if you are interested in RSS, this is how you access that. We've already covered importing subscribers and importing content. If you do desire to export your data, you can do so here by clicking export all subscribers and exporting posts. Lastly, for subscribe forms, we'll go over this in greater detail in a different video, but if you want to create an external subscribe form for use on a third-party CMS or website builder, or if you want to give it to a partner website, you can generate those forms here. We've already covered the design lab. We've covered the website in our previous videos on setting up the theme. The last thing here is with integrations, if you have a review account with an API, you can set up the embed from Twitter integration here. Our current API version is API version two. So if you are on our grow plan or above, you can access our API to automate some of these processes and connect your Beehive account with other tools by using this publication ID and an API key that's generated down here. And we covered the MailChimp integration in our migration video, but if you do wanna bring your content over from MailChimp, you can add that integration right here. So this covers essentially all of the settings that you have accessible in your account. And once you go through and you set these up and customize them, they're gonna tie it together. Thank you so much for your time. Look forward to seeing what you build.